Swaya Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauda Vani Pachari Nini Vasisa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Sitarane Pancha Kalpa, Taru Pesha Kripa Sindhu Pe, Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bio, Vaishnave Bio, and Mahona Maha, Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadar Siva Sadibor Bhattarinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare. So we will continue, and today will be the conclusion of our discussion since the 22nd would be today will be the last day tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is also Jaya, uh, Hanuman Jayanti. It is the appearance of Hanuman. But tomorrow also is Balaram Rasayatra. So tomorrow we will, uh, we will, uh, move into Balaram Rasayatra. Today I'd like to, after discussing many of the activities and appearances, pastimes, and extraordinary feats of devotion by Hanuman, we'd like to delineate some of those <coughs> into a deeper understanding of what Hanuman is teaching us because the Ramayana is actually, it's actually, uh, it's a lesson on life. <laughs> it's not, a, it's, it's a way of life. It's not simply a story. It is a historical phenomenon that happened two million years ago when life was completely different than what we know it today. When life was more geared towards devotion towards worshiping God and towards uh, removing irreligion from the world. So this uh, Ramayan is really a treatise on how to live life. Each of the players within the Ramayan pastimes have something to offer us coming from both camps, both those who are favorable to God those who are caught in the middle between God and the demons and those who are demoniac. All three of these categories of personalities bring something forward that we can um, use in our Krishna consciousness. We generally learn from example. We learn from precept. Precept means that which is taught to us by the authorities on the subject. We also learn more from the examples that people exhibit in the, in the activities they perform that exemplify certain characteristics and qualities that are outstanding. Hanuman is a bastion of so many outstanding, amazing qualities. And one of the qualities which I think is foremost is his absorption in devotion to Ram. And his absorption is fueled by his enthusiasm to please the Lord and his determination to stay steady in the activities of devotional service. Um, in one of the pastimes, which we gave a little summation on Friday, was Hanuman was crossing the ocean. And that led to the finding of Sita in the Ashoka Grove of Ravana and the exchange between Hanuman and Sita and ultimately Hanuman's destruction of a big part of Lanka and the awareness that the demons were now ready or were going to be attacked until they changed their pro program to give Sita back. That was never to happen. But now 
that pastime illustrated a certain major part of the Ramayana, and that is the return of Sita to Ram. Um, in Hanuman's uh, trek across the ocean, we have uh, a lot to learn in that particular uh, particular activity. And we can learn it from the material perspective and from the, the spiritual perspective. And I'll speak on both. One of the things that was prominent in Hanuman's prelude to his jumping was something that was in his past, and that was his um, his uh, powers were not known to him unless he was reminded them. And so when the monkeys headed by Sugriva, actually Sugriva wasn't there. It was Jambavan who was there. Sugriva was in another area at the time. And many of the chief monkey soldiers along with Hanuman had gone to the Southern end of India to now to make a plan on how to cross the ocean. None of the monkeys saw themselves qualified, although they had mystic powers and could fly and could jump. None of them could make the distance. Only Hanuman, but Hanuman was not aware of his power to do that. So um, he lacked the confidence to carry it out. But it only was when he was reminded by Jambavan, the king of the bears, who was the oldest personality there in the entire Ramayana, he had lived many, many millenniums before and can till existed. He also appears in Krishna's pastimes later on. That's how old uh, Jambavan was. One of the things that Jambavan did, he instilled the knowledge that Hanuman needed to jump across. And that was the knowledge of confidence. Hanuman had not remembered his powers, but when he was reminded, he understood and then he was ready to begin his uh, trek. So one of the points that was made that we can understand is that in our Krishna conscious practice, we may we do have the characteristics and qualities to do things in devotional service, but sometimes we lack confidence. And because we lack confidence, two reasons why we lack confidence, one, is we see ourselves in a limited way. And two is that we are using our qualities and characteristics in activities which are geared to our own sense enjoyment. And when we do that, we lose the confidence we need and fail to access that confidence which is there when we are determined to carry out the activities. So therefore, Jambavan acts as the spiritual master to empower and to remind the disciple of the qualities they have and the abilities that they can acquiesce by becoming determined to carry out the instructions of the spiritual master. So that lack of confidence can come by the grace of the spiritual master, and it can be fortified when we, be, when we pull back our activities away from sense gratification. So that was the first thing that happened. The second thing is that when Hanuman now was ready to go, he did one thing, he started to pray to Ram. He offered beautiful prayers to Ram. And when he jumped and started to fly through the air, he started to chant the holy names of Rama. Prayer somehow or other inspires us. When we, when we make a sincere prayer and with the confidence that we know that this prayer is fueled by the mercy of the Supreme Lord, then our confidence 
in performing the activities that we are about to perform, which seems to be difficult. Sometimes it's just a short range goal in Krishna consciousness, or it may also be the life's goal, developing love of God. Then that prayer uh, inspires us by the mercy of the Lord who answers the prayer and somehow or other helps us to have the enthusiasm. It comes from within, not from without, to have the enthusiasm to push on. So first the confidence and then the prayer. The third thing, and we see as Hanuman was jumping across the ocean, a golden mountain appeared out of the ocean. It was Mount Minda. And the mountain offered to give Hanuman a place to rest and to relax, to do, to take a break. Um, and in life, there are good things and there are bad things, good things and bad things. Both of them can be obstacles. And this thing we have to understand clearly that even so-called good things, when they are not aligned with our Krishna consciousness can det deter our attention away from the activities of devotional service. And we can develop a mental block. That mental block is what it is, a block within the mind, a desire to go slow, a desire to go away, as we see in the case of Hanuman, an opportunity to enjoy. But Hanuman wasn't, wasn't faced by that. He saw it as an obstacle, but he recognized it was coming in the form of something that was someone who wanted to do some service for him. So he acknowledges, he acknowledged the mountain's goodwill and offering, and at the same time, politely declined and continued on his mention. So these golden mountains which appear in our life can be blocks in our determination in Krishna consciousness, which can cause us, as we mentioned, to slow down or to go away. Mm -hmm. When we're going on our goal, a lot of times we're getting closer to the goal. And then sometimes we find that when we get closer to the goal, or we run into some kind of conflict with someone. And because we're on the way to a particular goal, we develop this confidence about the way we are going. And sometimes that, that way we are going is challenged by others. And then we develop this competitive mentality and try to prove ourselves better than the other person. For instance, when Hanuman was jumping across the ocean, uh, Sarasya, she was sent by the demigods to test Hanuman by offering him uh, a boon that Brahma gave her. Brahma said, no one can pass this way without entering my mouth. So at first there was a competition who could open their mouth wider but Hanuman realized that to stop the competition and simply accept the fact that uh, I could do the same thing without a competitive mentality. This helps us to become more focused and to again regain our attention on our goal in life instead of getting into these competitions which will divert our attention away and may even cause us to uh, you know, uh, really go off the track. Mm -hmm. And the last principle from the material one was envy. As Hanuman was crossing the ocean, Simika, who was sent by the demons to block Hanuman, she was a Rakshasha. She grabbed upon his shadow. Hanuman was flying higher than she was, so she grabbed upon his shadow. A person who wants to find fault with you 
and does is simply holding on to your shadow. This is a, a nice analogy to understand. Uh, every soul has all good qualities. And so if people are envious towards us or acting in that way, in some way, they're holding on to our shadow. Saras uh, Simica was holding on to the shadow of Hanuman. And because he couldn't move, and finally there was a competition. And then uh, Hanuman uh, used his intelligence and entered into her body and came out her stomach and ultimately killed her. So envy has to be killed. <laughs> Envy cannot be dovetailed into Krishna conscious. You can dovetail lust. In other words, you can use lust for to serve the Lord. You can use anger to serve the Lord. You can use greed to serve the Lord. You can use pride to somehow or other transform that consciousness into a spiritual pride. But envy, and this is mentioned by Srila Prabhupada in a few times in his lectures, envy called Matsarya. Matsarya has to be given up. Or in this case, the envy was the directed towards Hanuman. He wasn't envious, but he was being he was the object of envy by this demon called Simika, who wanted to destroy him. So hanging on to the shadow of a person means to find faults with that person. So we can also see that if we're finding faults with someone, we're holding on to their shadow because the soul by nature has all good qualities. Mm -hmm. So these different obstacles that they represent, now on the spiritual platform, um, what we can understand from these different obstacles that uh, Hanuman was, keeping one's mind focused on devotional service, Crossing over the ocean represents crossing over the ocean of pride. Hanuman had a lot of good qualities, but he remembered Ram. The story in the uh, Chaitanya Chari Tamrita, when Lord Chaitanya was traveling in South India, he came to Kormashetra. And prior to his arrival in Kormashetra, one particular devotee who was a leper, he was very greatly afflicted with leprosy, but still he was a great devotee. He had to live by himself because of his abominable uh, bodily situation, which was not at all uh, able to associate with anyone. But he wanted to get the darshan of the Lord simply by seeing the Lord. He didn't want to, he knew he couldn't actually meet the Lord, but he wanted to just see the Lord when he passed through Kormashetra. But somehow it didn't happen. And when Vasudev the leopard found out that Lord Chaitanya had already gone through Kormashetra, he was lamenting his unfortunate situation. So much so that the Lord in the heart realized his lamentation and understood his devotion, the Lord came back and he came right to the place where um, Vasudev was. When the Lord saw Vasudev, he immediately came towards Vasudev and embraced him. Now, Lord Chaitanya is big. If he embraces someone, you can't get out of that. And so he was embracing this leper who had sores all over his body and all these sores were touching the body of Lord Chaitanya. Now, there's a beautiful painting that's done to depict this particular pastime and you can see how it's played out. But what happens is that Vasudev's body on contact with Lord Chaitanya's body becomes healed. It becomes completely free from all diseases, and now he has a, a young, healthy body. Uh, Vasudev was overwhelmed by the Lord, and now he finally speaks. His speech was surprising, thinking that 
most people would think he would be very happy and very grateful. He was grateful for the Lord, but he wasn't happy. Why wasn't he happy? Because he was thinking, I've been shown special mercy by the Lord, and now I will become proud. <laughs> now I will become proud. So this pride can enter in if you receive the mercy of the Lord and you benefit from that. Or it can come in by certain characteristics and qualities that we exhibit in devotional service and we become proud of these things. So this ocean that, that Hanuman jumped across is like the ocean of pride. <laughs> he remained free from that because he always was chanting the name of Rama as he was flying across the ocean. That name propelled him just like an arrow cannot do anything by itself. But if you put the arrow onto a bow and you fire it, then that arrow can go a great distance depending on the strength of the bow and the power of the bowman. In this case, the bowman was Ram's name and it was propelling Hanuman across the ocean. Therefore, he was feeling the mercy of the Lord, but at the same time doing uh, amazing and glorious feats that no one could do, but he wasn't the least bit proud. So Lord Chaitanya, when he received the message from Vasudev that Vasudev was not happy because he was afraid of being given recognition and pride would develop, the Lord told him, my dear Vasudev, simply chant the holy names of the Lord. And incessantly, the Lord said, continually chant and you'll never become proud. So this is a very important instruction that we can overcome this pride by regular and, and as much as we can do it, constant chanting of the holy names of the Lord. When we're connected with the Lord in that way, it's unlikely at all that pride will come in. Pride can come by doing good to others. Pride can be come by doing great things for others. Pride can come in so many different ways, but pride can destroy one's bhakti if it stays, what we say, at a period of time within one's consciousness. Because after a while, pride will cause us to make mistakes, commit offenses to others, and act in a way that is uh, contrary to our nature, which is to, to become humble and dependent upon the Lord. So that's another uh, lesson in the obstacles that Hanuman faced. And at the same time, Hanuman was very intelligent. Although he was faced with so many of these good diversions and not so good diversions, he remained detached from everything. He kept his mind focused on his devotional service. Another lesson that can be learned from this particular pastime, uh, developed a sense of detachment from praise and from blame. Sometimes we say that, you know, praise and blame are simply the same, only difference in name. What does that mean is that it pertains to the body, not to you, the soul. So when we detach ourselves from the praise and brain that may come in our execution of devotional service and remain fixed on the devotional service, not swayed by either, we get upset when people don't recognize or don't honor or find fault with what we do. And we somehow or other become, uh, what we say, inflated. Our ego becomes stronger when we find people are uh, glorifying us or we're doing something that is glorious. We may even find, uh, we also might even reflect on ourselves and think, well, I'm doing such nice service. But a sense of detachment using the intelligence from everything that's happening keeps one focused on devotional service. 
And another thing, uh, not being moved by the benefits of devotional service, just like in the execution of the de devotional service, Vishwanath Chakravarti Tarko speaks of one characteristic called Ranga Tarangini. Ranga, R-A-N-G-A-N-A, -A, Rangana, Rangana Tarangini, which means considering the benefits that we receive from devotional service as the indications of our advancement in devotional service. In other words, if we receive some remuneration, some followers, something. Uh, as Lord Chaitanya said, he's not interested in followers, he's not interested in wealth, he's not interested in being known as a great orator of the Vedas, he's not interested in enjoying in this material world with the opposite sex. So he teaches that these things are just simply obstacles. The glitter of the perks that come by way of successful execution of devotional service. It says that when you plant a seed in the ground, the plant grows, but sometimes along with the plant, weeds grow up along with the plant. And the weeds sometimes even look like the plant, but they're not. If these weeds are allowed to remain, then they can choke out the original plant. So what are these weeds? Patishta, Puja, uh, what else? Uh, Patishta, Puja, uh, var um, various types of characteristics that we develop in the execution of devotional service that are unfavorable. Uh, Pratishta puja, desire for name, fame, so many things. Okay, so these are these are five. I mentioned five of the material things that Hanuman faced, and what are the five characteristics and qualities that were used to overcome these uh, materialistic obstacles that he faced. And therefore he was successful. He, came, he was determined and he kept his mind focused on his service to Ram and he stayed connected with Ram all the time he was executing his devotional service. So I'll stop there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for uh, in very, very uh, great detail explaining to us about Manji, his glorious qualities, and how he stayed focused and remained very humble, even though he performed great and amazing feats for the Lord. So these are very instructive lessons for us. Thank you so much for giving us your mercy and your guidance and wisdom. Dear devotees, if you have questions, comments, realizations, or would like to share something about the story of uh, Hanumanji, please do so. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, I would have a question connected to, to pride um, because uh, as you, you narrated this, this part of the pastime, I, I was thinking that sometimes um, there is this subtle type of, of pride when I don't even notice uh, in my, my way of thinking but uh, later on, uh, I, I realized from, from my reactions to certain things. And uh, should I bother this if, if I notice uh, my, this, this subtle type of pride or, or should I just uh, leave it like, like that, that the process will, will uh, purify it? Well, so you're indicating that you're not aware that it's there and it comes out when it comes out, then you notice it. 
Yeah. And so when it, so when you comes out and you notice it, you have to think, well, what is? It? Well, now I see it. There must be a cause to it. And therefore, one should try to see what's causing that, and try to remove that, along with what you concluded with, and that is to stay fixed in your devotional service. But we should also be, uh, what we say, aware of what is there. It may be something that has been there for, you know, many lifetimes, or but it's, but it's exposed by the incident that causes it to appear. So then you examine, why am I feeling or acting like this? based on this situation. So we, we give it a one word name, envy, or when we say uh, pride, or jealousy, something. But then again, why are we like that? And that's your shadow, it's not you, it's something that comes by way of material association, but it has to be removed because material, uh, Inebrities are like, you know, diseases, and they have to be uh, cut away by the process of the medicine of the holy name, along with the process of devotional service. So don't just brush them off and say, well, that's just the way I am. No, try to understand it and see what, what's making it happen. I see. It's just sometimes it's it's very difficult for me <clears throat> to understand what is it uh, that I can do uh, for purification. That what is it that I mean? Actually, everything comes from from Krishna. Uh, all all uh, development and and purif purification. So so I I understand that I have to do some efforts, but uh, sometimes that's it's not clear. Uh, um what what effort is uh helps to to there's to where something. prayer comes in mm -hmm. there's where you pray and by praying you'll get a clearer understanding of how to respond to that uh, prayer has a way of revealing the things that we can't necessarily see simply by uh, using our discriminating faculties. We may have to just pray. Why is it like this, Krishna? We also use that when we find ourselves in a situation we don't want to be in. And we, we pray to Krishna to, help, to give us an understanding. Why am I in this situation? Why am I like acting like that? And what is the way to overcome that? We take in instructions from the scriptures. We take instructions from the spiritual master. But then again, to uproot the disease, it's also know, know what causes the disease. But Bhagavatam explains these different negativity, negative qualities and what is their cause, what is their source. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, I, I, I heard so many times uh, the importance of prayer, but somehow, I don't know why, I always forget it uh, to, to, to pray. And could you recommend some practical type of thing, how, how I could remind myself uh, to, to have it in mind? Because even when some kind of difficulty happens to me, uh, the first which comes into my mind is, okay, I have to tolerate it. So uh, usually people at least pray when they are in, in difficulties, but I, I, I just somehow don't remember. <clears throat> but I understand the, the importance and the power of prayer. So you want to but, know what, what is a reminder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's different ways to remind yourself. <laughs> When something becomes important, it becomes easy to remember. When it's not so important, then a reminder is needed. Again, we saw that the, the lack of confidence that all the monkeys had 
was always overshadowed by the fact that Hanuman could do it, but he wasn't aware of it. Only when he was reminded by uh, Jambavan, then he, oh yes, I can do it. But then again, he felt, still he felt that there was more to it than just saying I could do it. Therefore, he, before he jumped, he prayed also. And while he was flying, he was also praying. The Hare Krishna mantra is also a prayer. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I will try. Well, I can give you one last thing. Just take a big placard and write the word prayer and put it on your wall. Oh, yeah, that's... That's nice and useful. I know people do that. Devotees do that. If they want to remind mm -hmm. themselves, they make it make it into a plaque and put it on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I will do that, I, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, there's a question on the chat from Anasuya. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, what are examples in transforming anger, lust, etc., into devotional service? Examples? You mean how to do it, or are there ex examples in our Shastra? Um, I'm not sure. Anasuya, if you are there, could you just clarify that, please? Hare Krishna, sorry for any background noise. Um, uh, I guess both would be nice. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. um, can you clarify the question a little bit? Do you want what causes these things, or you want examples from the Shastras of how people have overcome these? Um, yeah, I think uh, examples in Shastra would be nice. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Well, we have the example of Kuja, who she was a, a lusty person who approached Krishna when he first came to Mathura. And uh, she wanted to have, you know, relationship with Krishna. But Krishna purified her simply by his presence. And, he transformed that lust into its natural propensity, love. Love, love is the actual source where lust, lust comes because when love is not there, it comes out in its negative or its material counterpart, lust. So, uh, and Hanuman is an example of using anger in Krishna consciousness. He became angry at those who were against God and those who were uh, offensive to God. So he used his anger. Han ha Hanuman was very expert at using anger. And in order to fight, you have to use anger. Arjuna was the same thing. Krishna inspired Arjuna to become angry so he could fight on behalf of religious principles. So we have the, these examples of anger, transformed, lust, and there are many. Yeah. Kubja is one for lust. Um, the gopis. They simply saw Krishna, uh, but their, their lust was actually love for Krishna because they wanted to please Krishna and not take advantage. L lust is something that wants to gain something for its own benefit, where love, which is the same energy where lust derives its existence from, is based on selfishness. So train, changing our lusty desires into love for Krishna means 
using our energy to serve the Lord. Sometimes we say even working hard for Krishna is a way to transform, transform or divert our, our attention away from lusty desires. <laughs> And in the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam, uh, I think it's I think it's in the fifteenth chapter. It talks about how to use these different characteristics in the service of the Lord. Lust, anger, greed, all of them are mentioned. If you go to the seventh canto, fifteenth chapter, towards the end of the chapter, it describes these carry these qualities and how. They can be transformed into devotional activity. The only thing you can't dovetail is envy. Envy has to be destroyed. Envy is destroyed by humble service to the Vaishnavas and by being learning, learning to become satisfied with whatever Krishna gives us <laughs> and not looking outside and feeling unhappy because we don't have something or somebody has something we want. <laughs> if we see something outside that somebody has something that we want, we should learn from that person rather than envy them. Prabhupada speaks about spiritual envy. How in the spiritual world, if one gopi sees another gopi serving Krishna so nicely and Krishna is pleased by that service, they glorify that gopi because they have pleased Krishna so nice. But at the same time, they think, oh, I want to please Krishna like she pleased Krishna. Or I'm, I want to please Krishna even better than she pleased Krishna. So that, that mood inspires them to increase their service and their love for Krishna just to please Krishna. Krishna being the object, therefore it becomes spiritualized. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, all right with you, Anasuya? Would you like to ask some more clarifying questions? Thank you. It was perfect. Hare Krishna. Okay. So. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, may I have another question? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, you spoke about uh, this uh, when, when we are envious of someone. Uh, is it helpful if we try to serve the person who, whom we are envious of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Thank you very much. Well, get rid of the envy by becoming satisfied. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just somehow uh, I, I uh, in in so many classes I I uh, hear this um, to to learn to be satisfied. So I just consider that they, this may be uh, Krishna's message for for me, uh, but I, I just don't know how I could learn it. Because well, I, if you are, the best way to learn is just reflect on what so many wonderful things that Krishna is giving you. And then appreciate that. <laughs> Be grateful for that. An envious person is a person who's not happy. The devotee's happy seeing all the how merciful Krishna has bestowed so many things upon the devotee. We don't even Thank we you. don't take time to reflect on his mercy upon us. We don't appreciate that mercy, or you were not even aware of it. 
Yeah. We can't do anything without Krishna. It's not possible. Nobody can do anything. Thank you very he's much. In, it was yeah, amazing. he's behind everything on all levels. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, Sri Devi, is, is that it? Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going to check in with everyone. Dear devotees, the life of Hanuman is so glorious and his feats are so amazing. Uh, would you like to ask any further questions? <laughs> Learn from these. It doesn't look like there are any more questions, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your kindness to us. Hare Krishna. So tomorrow we'll speak on uh, Balaram. No, that's Tuesday. I'm sorry. Today is uh, tomorrow. We'll speak on Hanuman again. And that'll be the last day, and we'll go over the Hanuman Chalisa tomorrow, and then on Tuesday we'll do Balaram Rasiyatra. Okay. Thank you very much, Shiva Prabhupada. Jai. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. His Grace Madan Gopal Prabhu says, everything said was exactly what I needed to hear. Jai Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Dev. Thank you so much. Arjuna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for everything. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj.